As mentioned, my name is Petra Marlin. I am the Director of Admissions at the University of Southern Mississippi. And um, I've really been I've really been thrilled about the opportunities that have arisen, um, even in the midst of all of this chaos that is going on, to be able to connect with people more virtually. Um, so that that's very exciting for me um, because we don't get to travel quite as much. And so lots of opportunities have opened up like this. Um, so I'm here to talk about honors colleges in the United States um, and why an honors college, for example. Um, and some of you may be familiar with what an honors college is or may not be. So we're going to walk through all of those different steps. And then I also added a couple of little points in at the end of the presentation about um, being a smart shopper and things to look at in order to maximize your, um, you know, your, your um, funding for studying in the United States. So we'll just launch into this. So what's on our minds? These are the different things that I'm going to go over and cover in this presentation. Um, what is an honors college or honors program? Those are kind of two different things, um, but, but similar in many ways. Um, how do you get in? How are you admitted to those programs? Um, is there a separate application process? Um, do you receive any kind of additional financial support for being in an honors college or program? And what are the benefits? So those are the things that we're gonna um, go over today. Okay, so what is an honors college or honors program? Um, typically an honors college is something that you'll see at a, um, at a university that um, is maybe a little bit larger. And so the college is a standalone college. Um, it usually has a physical building associated with it. Whereas a program you might find at, um, at maybe a community college or college, um, where maybe you might be admitted directly to the program, um, but there's not an actual physical building associated with it. They just kind of give you some, some guidelines about what you need to complete in order to, um, to, to complete the honors program. Um, so, but both of these, both the college and the program offer an academically challenging or rigorous curriculum um, for students who are motivated and talented, who can take on that extra, um, academic endeavor. And um, both of them are selective. Um, generally, I think the colleges more so will have an actual application process, whereas the programs might just invite the student based on their, um, their test scores and GPA. Um, they provide opportunities to connect and collaborate with other outstanding students and scholars and faculty um, in your academic field and they really kind of push and challenge you to go to that next academic level. Um, you may also have access to expanded research opportunities um, and in fact a lot of times they will really highly encourage or um, push you towards re research as an undergraduate student. Um, and then also when you graduate you will have an honors designation on your transcript um, and you're recognized generally at graduation with um, special cores that you wear um, as an honors um, graduate. So how are these programs structured? Um, generally, you will see that they have um, smaller class sizes and specialized uh, classes as well. So, um, you know, all students have to take, for example, like English 101, but there usually will be an honors designated class for English 101 um, or certain um, science classes or um, entry level um, social science classes. So depending on what your, your field specialty is, you'll generally find some classes that are specifically honors um, designated classes. Um, they are highly developmental classes, so they'll usually require a little bit extra work on the student's part, um, and they emphasize critical thinking and problem solving skills. And many programs also have a thesis requirement. So a thesis is kind of a, um, a research project that students conduct. And if you're applying to a graduate program, like a master's or PhD program, Thesis is a more common term that you hear because that's kind of your, your, your research project. So this really is preparing students to go into um, further 
study for their field for um, for master's or PhD um, programs. And at the end of the presentation, I'll give you some examples of some of our students who, um, who really, I believe, had some wonderful opportunities afforded to them because of the experiences they gained through the Honors College at Southern Mills. Okay, so here are the approaches to the Honors College or program admission process. Um, I mentioned briefly just a little bit about about the automatic admission based on GPA and test scores. And generally when that happens, then the school will also send out a notification saying, congratulations, you've been admitted to the honors program. Um, here's what that entails and you can, you know, accept it or say, you know, I'm not interested in doing that. But, um, but just in case you are offered that kind of opportunity, you know, ask some more questions. Um, is there any additional funding associated with that? Any additional benefits or anything um, that you might want to know about and then make your decision from there. While other schools like the University of Southern Mississippi, we have, um, I believe it's the sixth oldest honors college uh, or acceptance based honors college in the United States, meaning that you had to actually apply to it. Um, we have competitive admission and it is based on um, an actual application that you submit. Um, recommendation letters from your teachers um, or counselors um, and then and also they look at your GPA test scores and um, and other aspects of your curriculum so let's see. okay so we have one question related to um, what I just talked about so I'm going to um, just address it um, and it is would uh, application requirements be different for admission and scholarships for honors program. Um, so like I mentioned, some programs may offer automatic admission, but um, at Southern Miss, we do have a separate application um, for the honors college um, and for honors scholarships. So um, you would apply to the university um, and generally um, the admission or the application deadlines for honors programs and scholarships, at least for us, are very early. Um, and so we, we always try to look and see if a student meets test score requirements and GPA requirements um, for our scholarship deadline, which is earlier than the honors college application deadline, then we really try to send out emails and encourage those students to apply to the honors college um, and let them know about it um, and to also apply to the, the programs. Um, would career opportunities be different for honor students than for others? No, you can, well, you can pursue any major that you want to pursue as an honor student. Um, but I do think that honor students do have a little bit of a benefit in terms of when they go on for their master's and PhD programs because they've been working so closely with a lot of the faculty. So, all right. So let's see what else we have. So admission requirements, this um, usually honors programs will, or honors colleges programs will start in the fall. Gen a lot of them only have admission for the fall because that's usually when um, the majority of freshman students are starting. And so it's important to think about those early deadlines like uh, December, January type um, timeframes for making sure that you would be able to apply to honors college. I always advise my international students really to apply um, by November 1st um, so that they can get ahead up on the scholarship opportunities and, and other opportunities that are available. Um, usually the, the ACT or SAT scores are in a, in a, a higher range um, average or starting ACT around 27. And then if you have a 1260 plus SAT score, then um, we would encourage students to um, apply to Honors College. And then as far as GPA requirements, um, really most students will have a 4.0 um, GPA, but if you have at least a 3.75 GPA, um, and that's really like a, a B plus kind of um, a grade or A grade, um, then you would meet those requirements. Let's see. So the question here is, is the university test optional? Would I still be required to submit test scores for honors entry? The university itself is test optional for SAT and ACT. We don't require that for international students. 
The Honors College, however, and to be eligible for any of our merit-based scholarships does require an SAT or ACT score. I know that the early deadline might be um, a little concerning for students. I know because the, you know, the SAT is not being widely offered yet. Um, what I can say is that we can offer admission to the university um, just based on um, your transcripts and it doesn't have to be your final transcript they can still be in progress so you really want to be applying during um i guess i guess at the beginning of your senior year um is when you want to be applying so before you've actually graduated you just apply with your your 9 10 11 grades um and you can be admitted with just those and your proof of english proficiency so if you haven't taken the ACT yet, you can, we offer the, the ITEP as an online test you can take. TOEFL is now also online, but ITEP I think has a little bit more easy camera requirements. Um, and so you can meet the, um, the, the English proficiency requirements with those unless you've done um, the British curriculum or the IB curriculum, then you can meet the requirements with those for um, English proficiency. And then once you're admitted, you could still submit test scores after you've been admitted to be considered for scholarships. Um, and the latest uh, test date that you could take would be December um, in order to still meet the scholarship deadline and the deadline for our Honors College. So other things that are considered in the application for Honors College are involvement. So different things that you've done outside of the classroom, um, part-time jobs or volunteer work or research experience that you've had. They're looking for well-rounded and motivated students, okay? Um, for teacher recommendations, they're also looking that the teacher is highlighting open-mindedness and work ethic. Um, we do also look at um, the you know, if, if class rankings are available, um, they may look at that as well or what kind of curriculum was taken. Um, and then there's also a, an, an essay that needs to be submitted along with that application. We don't require an essay for our general application to the university, but the Honors College will require an essay. Um, and so, you know, it's encouraged that you have somebody proofread your essay um, and look at that. And then, um, as I mentioned, the, the deadlines are kind of early, so that December, January timeframe is when you want to be looking at that, but some programs are on a rolling basis. Let's see, there was another question here about um, the test scores. So between TOEFL, IELTS, and Duolingo, which would be preferred for us, we are not accepting Duolingo currently. Um, we accept TOEFL, IELTS, and then the other test that I mentioned that, um, I don't know that it's as well known as in India as the ITEP, the ITEP, but they do offer um, a nice online version of the test as well. All right, so let's talk about financial support. Some honors colleges and programs offer um, financial support while some do not. Some may actually require that you pay a fee to participate. Um, at Southern Miss, we do support students financially who are, um, who are admitted to the Honors College. Um, so generally, if you're being admitted to the Honors College, it should mean that you're getting some other type of scholarship, um, usually a, a partial ride type scholarship, um, but it can cover up to full tuition based on your, um, your SAT scores. So in addition to whatever merit scholarship you receive automatically at the point of admission, you are also going to receive $2,000 per year from the Honors College. Um, and then the Honors College also has a presidential scholarship that students can apply to, which is basically um, a, a full ride scholarship that covers tuition and housing. And then we also have a number of other scholarship opportunities through scholarship op office, which are study abroad scholarships to allow students to do um, a study abroad experience. And then also research grants for um, conducting your research that you're interested in. 
let's see. Oh, what are some of the questions that colleges ask for essay topics? I'm, I, I think that if you, usually they have to do maybe with um, a challenge you've overcome or obstacle that you faced. Um, I think if you take a look at the, the common application scholarship questions, that will give you a good idea of what some of those topics um, might be. All right, so what are the, the benefits of attending honors? Because it is a little bit more work. Um, but you receive mentoring, so you have a, a person that regularly checks in with you, a faculty advisor, and you form close relationships with your peers and faculty through the program. So they do a lot of extracurricular type stuff where they bring students together and um, have experiences. I know at USM they also do a, um, a, um, a small trip um, somewhere and that usually that's funded by the Honors College. Um, you have access to special housing. So um, we have uh, honors designated um, dorms that you can live in um, that are very nice. And you get to participate in active hands-on learning experiences, um, opportunities to go on trips, like I said, out, outside the classroom. Um, the research experience, because you're really driven and pushed towards um, research, of course, makes you look great when you're applying to graduate programs or um, you know applying to jobs after school. And then they also focus a lot on leadership and professional development um, and really look at what types of skills hiring managers are looking for to try to develop those in students. And so I think we've added a slide in here about you know, in general, what are hiring managers looking for? Um, and these are some of the skills that they um, look for, you know, communication skills, critical thinking skills, um, decision making, teamwork, time management, being proactive. So, you know, we're not reactive, <laughs> being able to foresee problems and, and generate um, ideas to solve those problems. And then, actual knowledge application, like do you have knowledge of this subject matter? So possible drawbacks to attending an honors college, um, the workload, it is more, uh, more work, it's more challenging, uh, more time spent on, you know, research topics and those kinds of things. Um, so you really do know, need to know how to manage your time well in order to do that. Um, Sometimes if you're living in, in the honors housing, it's a little bit nicer housing option. And so it can, um, the, the housing fee might be a little more, more higher than some of, the, um, some of the other housing options on campus. And then some honors colleges charge a fee to participate. Um, at Southern Miss, we do not um, we give you money. So that's nice. Um, Okay, so I have a question down here. Um, from an admission and scholarship point of view, can you share how each item weighs in terms of importance? The transcripts, test scores, um, English scores, letters of recommendation, and essays. So from the merit, from the admission point of view, um, you know, we don't, I think I mentioned earlier, we don't require um, or really take into consideration um, letters of recommendation or essays. Um, in the um, admission process because we are really just looking at your academic performance um, in high school. So, it, so really your transcript is gonna weigh the most highly for admission purposes. And then for English scores, as long as you meet the um, English requirement, which for us a TOEFL of 71 or IELTS of 6.0, as long as you meet those requirements, then you're fine. Um, and the English scores don't hold any weight for um, scholarship consideration. For scholarship consideration, it is um, for merit-based scholarships um, or academic merit scholarships. It's purely uh, transcript and test scores. And at the end, I do have a grid that shows, you know, what test scores are needed for which amounts. And as long as you're admitted by the um, the deadline and have the test scores, and by the deadline, then you you receive those that scholarship. 
For the Honors College application, though, um, really all of those things are going to weigh in, except for the English scores. They're not going to look at that, but they're going to look at your transcripts, your test scores, your letters of recommendation, and essay, and they're going to weigh all of those um, in order to make that decision. Um, and also, of course, with the Presidential Scholarship for Honors College, um, that is a separate application, and, and there you're um, your experiences and your essay and a, ability to communicate um, through that essay, those are, are going to play a bigger role in that type of scholarship. Okay, um, so we realize the honors uh, college application is kind of early and some students might, you know, as a freshman that may just feel overwhelming and they may not apply as a freshman or a lot of our international students just missed the deadline. Um, a lot of our international students have come into our Honors College through um, what we call the Keystone Option, which is where they enter um, during their, at the beginning of their third year of studies, and they can still graduate with honors. Um, they don't get as big of a financial benefit because they, as a Honors Keystone student, you are only in it for two years and you get $1,000 per for each year that you're, uh, those two years. So there are still options to enter most honors colleges later. Um, and they'll base that off of your, um, your, your GPA at the institution usually. And usually they're not looking at SAT scores anymore because those become irrelevant once you've completed that much work at a university. So, um, so that, that's still an option. And, and a lot of the students that I'm gonna highlight actually came in as a uh, Keystone students and so many of our international students just even if they're not in the Honors College um, they're really notable students because they dive right in and they go after every research opportunity available and um, and really I find that our, our institution if you want research opportunities you will find them um, you just have to be eager and want to do them Okay, so here are some of our um, students I'm gonna highlight. Um, this is Mariam. She is from Nigeria. And um, she entered the honors program later, but um, she did a lot of really cool things. She um, got a, um, I think it was a, a summer program opportunity at University of Texas in Austin. Um, she was in the um, biomedical um, field and she did some, had some great research opportunities there. She was also our um, freshman student of the year when she first started because she was so involved, everybody um, knew her. And she was also one of our, our residence hall assistants and was then a senior residence hall assistant. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit. It's another way to um, help uh, find some funding for your, your studies. It's one of the better on-campus jobs. Okay, okay here's another um, student. She's from Mongolia, San Um She actually was able to land a, um, an internship at the Mayo Clinic, and I don't know if anybody's heard of the Mayo Clinic, but the Internships at Mayo Clinic are very difficult to come by. Um, so we were very proud of her. Um, again, she was in um, in the sciences area as well. I think she was um, biochemistry. And then we also have um, Sudiksha Kumar, who's from India, and she was in the, um, the honors program as well. And um, Let's see, and she was able to go um, study um, or go to a summer program at Baylor College in Houston, so, and doing research there. And these are two, two more students. Um, Aditya Karel, he also worked in our International Center for a while, um, and he was in computer science. And he just graduated this year and he was um, admitted um, directly into Purdue into a um, into a PhD program. And then Hamas Tahir was from Pakistan. He was in our polymer science and engineering program. Um, and he was also admitted directly into 
um, PhD program. I believe he decided on, he went on to several PhD programs, but I think he decided on Purdue in the end. Um, so we were really proud of our, our students here. Okay, um, so I'll talk a little bit about the University of Southern Mississippi. Um, we're located in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, which is down here in the southern part of um, Mississippi. We're about two hours from the city of New Orleans, um, a short, I guess you could drive to Atlanta in a day and also drive to Dallas in a day, but you can get some flights there as well. Um, our closest um, airport that we tell our incoming students um, their very first time to fly into is the Gulfport International Airport, just because we can easily pick students up from that airport. So we offer several days where we will um, provide transportation and pick students up. Um, outside of that, usually when students fly home after that, they usually find rides to the New Orleans airport. Um, we also have a train, Amtrak train that operates from New Orleans to Hattiesburg once a day, there and back. Um, we were founded in 1910 as a teacher's college and we've since moved on to be a full-fledged university, um, research university. We have, um, almost 15,000 students and 423 international students um, from a wide variety of countries. We're considered division one school for athletics. That means we compete at the highest level of athletic competition for, um, for college athletics. Um, and we are our R1 research institution, a very high research activity as designated by um, the Carnegie, Carnegie Foundation. And there are only about 130 schools with that um, research designation. So um, we're very proud of that. And we offer many academic programs. So some of the programs that I think are more popular with our international students are, um, of course, business, international business, computer science, um, biological science, in particular biomedical science. Um, and um, let's see what else. Are we? And then also our polymer science and engineering program. Um, so one of the students I highlighted um, just a minute ago, Hamas, he was in our polymer science and engineering program. There aren't very many un, um, undergraduate programs in the United States in this field, and it's basically um, it's based in the chemical engineering field. And you're basically using um, polymers to create materials, so man-made materials. Um, seems kind of, um, you know, it's very broad, has very broad applications, so it can be applied to the biomedical industry, to um, high-performance sports materials, the aerospace industry, um, and then um, also, of course, the technology industry, like cell phone casings and screens. So anything that's a man-made material like that. And we do um, focus on those types of high performance industries. So a student who goes into polymer science and engineering um, as an undergraduate is placed into a research group um, to begin with. So you kind of get to choose what you're, you know, explore a little bit what you're interested in and then go into that research group and you do um, create a final, you know, you, you do a final project um, as part of that, that major as well. Um, and then, of course, we have um, all of your other types of um, liberal arts majors, um, history, we have journalism, we also have um, a very strong music program, and our music program is, is mostly made up, well, our orchestra is probably 80% international students, and they're all on scholarships as well. Um, we have the performing arts and we're accredited in all four of the performing arts er or all four of the arts areas, um, music, art, dance, and theater. And so we provide students a lot of opportunities to perform throughout the year. And um, also the, the public health field, um, very popular with our Indian graduate students. Um, so we, we offer a lot of different programs, um, and if you have specific programs you're interested in, just let me know. If I didn't mention it, I can let you know if we have it or not. Um, and these are our freshman scholarships. So um, you have to be admitted by December 1st in order to qualify. Even if you don't have your SAT scores yet and you take them in December and turn them in by February 1st, you can still qualify, but you have to have admission. Um, and you really, you need to be applying during your 
current senior year. So if you take a gap year, that will make you ineligible for um, the freshman merit scholarships. Um, so starting at a 1080 SAT and a 3.0 GPA, which is like a B average, um, that will get you $2,500 per year. And then um, that amount goes up from there. And one of my children just walked in with our little puppy, but I'm doing a presentation. Okay. <laughs> These are the joys of working from home. <laughs> okay, so um, the scholarship does go up to full tuition. So if you have a 1370 um, SAT or higher, um, then that automatically gives you the, the full tuition discount. And then, of course, in addition to that, we have the honors program um, scholarship, and then they have some additional scholarships you can apply for. This is our annual cost of tuition uh, or annual overall fee. So for an R1 institution, we are probably one of the most affordable R1 institutions out there among those 130. Um, our tuition for this, um, this current school year stayed the same because of the the um, COVID pandemic, um, they did not raise the tuition for the 2021 school year. And you'll see that our overall cost um, about 24,000 is, is really quite reasonable for um, a US Division I um, R1 institution. And I mentioned that I would um, throw in some other smart shopping considerations. Um, because I do a, a separate presentation about these things and I think they're very helpful. Um, I always tell my students, don't put too much focus on the scholarship amount because the scholarship amount, you know, can look shiny and exciting um, and all of those things when it's very high, but if it's not taken into context with the cost of tuition and the cost of living, then you don't really get that bottom line um, price. So what you want to do is, um, you know, when you start having those scholarship offers roll in, um, you know, look at what is the tuition, what is the, the, the true cost of living, and then subtract your scholarship to get your bottom line of what it's going to cost you annually to attend that school. Okay. Um, is the estimated cost of living accurate? So a lot of schools have an affidavit of support and they list out what the, you know, the costs are for tuition and um, the cost of living. So what is, what is the cost of living based off? Is it based off of living on campus, off campus? Um, if that's the case, um, either way, um, you know, fact check the city's cost of living online to see if that's really, you know, truly what it should cost to live there. Um, we list our most reasonable on campus living rate along with what it would cost to to have a, a meal plan on campus and we find that that cost is pretty comparable to what it would cost to live off campus um, you know with a roommate as well so we just use that that cost for our cost of living and then how many credits are included in the cost of tuition so some schools um, really charge per credit hour and so a lot of institutions will just list either 12 credits, because that's the, the minimum you have to take to be in status as an international student, or 15 credits. Um, but if you were to take more than 12 or 15 credits, would it cost you more? Um, so at Southern Miss, our, our flat rate cost of tuition covers up to eight, I think up to nine, 18 or 19 credits. So you really shouldn't be taking more than that in a semester anyway. So those are all covered. Can you take summer classes at the in-state rate? A lot of um, institutions will offer that so that if you have to take summer classes and you're trying to just, you know, graduate a little quicker, um, is that available? And then also fact checking tuition ranking websites. I've seen a lot of, you know, ranking websites out there and I think they just kind of grab their information, but they don't really cross check things. So I would always cross check those. And then another way to help reduce costs I'm, I mentioned is, you know, you can work on campus, you know, maybe up to 20 hours per week for like a minimum wage job, or there are also residence hall assistant jobs. These are jobs where you are kind of on call in the residence halls, you act as a mentor, they provide a lot of training, um, but you get your housing for free and you also get your meals for free. And at Southern Miss, you also get your, um, your student health insurance for free. So that really covers um, a lot of ground there. 
Okay, so I saw a couple of other questions come in. Um, what would be the form I-20 requirements and would the documents need to be submitted before admission or after admission? For our institution, we don't require those documents up front. Um, we usually start sending out information about um, gathering those documents after a student has been admitted. I am on a presentation. <laughs> um, so those need to be submitted um, after a student's admitted. So we don't base our admission on, on, on any of that. Um, can you double major in business and political science under the honors program? Yes. Um, if you're in the honors program, you can certainly double major. In fact, a number of those students that I listed above, um, Aditya was, um, he was computer science and mathematics, I think. Um, and I think um, Hamas may have even had a double major as well. So yes, you can absolutely double major as an honors student. Um, and then the next question was, what would be the closest international airport for incoming students? Um, the Gulfport International Airport is the, the one that we recommend to students who are coming in their very first time and are expecting to have airport pickup and transportation to the university. Um, you know, if you know people here um, and, and you're able to arrange a ride or just want to take the train, then you can fly into the New Orleans International Airport and do that. Okay, so I think that was my last slide. Um, for questions, I put, my name is up here. A lot of times I do this presentation with um, Emily Grzynskas, who is the coordinator of recruitment for the Honors College. Um, she has been really welcoming to our international students. Um, really enjoys working with them. So if you have specific questions about the Honors College, she is the person to, um, to be in touch with and, and ask those questions of. And she, she's really um, an ex excellent um, resource and support person for that. So do we have any other questions? Yes. Um, Okay, so if I could talk about um, campus safety and also campus precautions in light of COVID-19. Um, so I'll kind of backpedal to when all of this started. Um, we were, when, you know, as a lot of <laughs> schools were closing down their residence halls and I mean, closing them down to everybody. Um, our school did not close them to everybody because we have international students. We have some students that, um, even domestic students that just do not have any keep one residence hall open to accommodate all of those um, students who had um, who had circumstances beyond their control and um, and wanted to make sure that they had a place to live and, and were safe. Um, our campus is a fairly safe campus. Um, I mean, in any city, you're going to have issues, um, but you know we have. Um, we have our own uh, campus police and students can contact if they were to feel unsafe um, and they, they patrol our campus. Um, it's not a huge, huge campus, so it's not too difficult to, to walk around um, and be safe there. Um, the other thing that um, is happening with COVID-19, I know a lot of you maybe heard about schools that were going fully online and the issues that international students might have if they're currently in the United States or trying to come. Um, Southern Miss had always intended um, throughout this whole summer, uh, you know, the talks have been that they would um, offer hybrid formats um, and would have some in-person classes, um, some online and some hybrid formats. Um, so when that announcement came out, um, I was happy to know that that is what the plan was and then the administration publicly announced that plan to reassure international students that yes they will still have options available to them to meet whatever requirements um, they will need to meet to stay um, in the country and the way they're going to do that is um, you know they're trying to offer more of those classes to freshmen and sophomores because it's more important for them to have a little bit more face-to-face -face interaction and so um, they're, they'll probably be holding some of those larger 
lecture style classes online or they're going to be splitting them up into smaller groups um, but they'll be um, holding those classes in larger classrooms they'll be requiring students to wear um, masks and of course um, we have um, we have more standard standard uh, sanitizing going on and cleaning going on um, in the buildings. Currently we work, um, there are some days we work from the office and some days we work at home. Today is one of my work at home days, um, but I do also go into the office um, and we just kind of trade off our days so we're not um, coming in contact with as many people at one time. So um, I felt pretty good about um, my safety at work there. Um, let's see, we were interested to know about campus life and activities. So, um, you know, we are a residential campus and um, up until COVID, I know that that's going to affect um, a lot of the, the campus life and activities, but I do know that um, once this started, we have, um, we have a very active um, community organization for international students um, and they have a, a Facebook group called iFriends. So I know that they've hosted some, um, some virtual um, kind of game nights and that kind of thing and reached out to our students. They also have been providing, um, you know, transportation to go shopping for our students. They have been, um, some of the churches have been providing meals where students can come to their um, one of our student unions and pick up um, the meals there, those types of things. But in a normal campus situation, we have a very active campus life and student government um, activities going on. We have a recreation center that also you can sign up for outings and, and do different things. We have um, um, a leadership and, and volunteer office as well. Um, and then there are also a lot of um, organizations based on um, academic interests. Uh, I know a lot of our international students aim to, um, to get involved in those and hold leadership positions in those. And then we have also have a very active um, Indian student organization um, and they host multiple events throughout the year as well. Um, okay, so one question here is, would it be possible to share more information about our current international students and also the majors they are pursuing? Um, I guess I'll start from an Indian student perspective. We have quite, we have a, a very healthy number of um, Indian students on campus. It's probably our, um, I wanna say our third largest population um, behind Nepal. In Brazil and um, a lot of the majors that those students were pursuing are um, computer science masters PhD in computer science and then our um, masters of public health um, is what those students are in um, we have a smaller handful of undergraduate students from India um, and I would hope that we could grow that number a little bit as I am able to share more information virtually with students about the opportunities that are available at Southern Miss, especially in the, um, the financial opportunities. And, you know, those students tend to go into um, the biomedical and biological sciences um, fields, although some also go into computer engineering and computer science um, as well. And then I also mentioned, I, you know, put a, a big spotlight out there for our polymer science and engineering program, because I just think that that's something that students don't always think about but it's a um you know it's something that international students can go back home with and really be marketable because there's probably not as many students um coming back home with polymer science and engineering degrees um, and whether you're working in you know a, a paints and coatings industry or textile industry or something a little bit more exciting beyond that um, i think it's still a very marketable major other questions? No? I think we're almost... Yeah, I think we have uh, one more that's coming, Petra. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Y'all are great and have really good questions. I'm impressed. Uh, 
I think there's one more about career opportunities uh, that's just coming. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'll just talk in general about that because our, um, you know, Hattiesburg isn't necessarily situated in a big city area. Um, so most of our students that um, go on for OPT or CPT, they are, um, they're usually getting um, offers outside of um, Mississippi and bigger cities, um, but they definitely are, are getting opportunities. Um, I know it's been a little more frustrating with the COVID situation um, this year, but, but we still, we do have students have, who have gotten um, OPT and CPT opportunities, but um, under normal circumstances, they're, our students generally don't um, have any issues with that. Um, our Career Services Center has been, over the last three years, it's been recognized um, by a number of um, websites as being a top 25 um, Career Services Center. Um, so I do believe that they offer a lot of help with things. Um, also, you know, the more connected our students are with the academic departments and their faculty, they have connections to um, to places that have hired our students. And then of course, if you're in the Honors College then you have an even more added um, uh, network of faculty um, that will, you know, be helping you trying uh, to try to get um, opportunities, so. But I can say that our students are, um, you know, they're graduating, they're being successful, they're either being admitted, you know, to great um, masters and PhD programs. Um, I'll say that of our undergraduates this year that I know of, I've tried to keep up with them, um, at least seven of our undergraduates were admitted directly into PhD programs, which that means that they're fully funded, right? Okay. Oh, there were some more questions. I just didn't scroll down. Uh, what is the city and people like in Hattiesburg? So um, Hattiesburg is a, a smaller um, city. Um, the metro population is about 140,000 people. Um, you know, we do have a mall and, you know, movie theaters and um, things to do. There are a lot of usually um, outdoor type gatherings um, and music events, usually free, so that's nice. Um, I find that our, you know, our international students we've been interviewing um, recently, if you go on our Facebook page, um, I should have tried to share that on here, but um, it's uh, University of Southern Mississippi International Admissions. Um, we've been highlighting um, a good number of our students that have graduated. So they'll, they'll make some mention about what it's like in Hattiesburg as well, if you want to read those profiles. But um, the people here are welcoming, um, especially like our, like I said, our, our international friends community, which is, um, you know, people who are outside of the university, but also like universities are, and professors are involved. Um, we have a nice core group of people um, not necessarily associated with the university um, churches and those types of things that really reach out and help international students get set up like um, the uh, I know the Westminster Church they have like a um, a uh, furniture kind of closet where if you need furniture you can loan it and then give it back to them when you leave that kind of thing um, you know taking students to go shopping that that kind of thing and just watching out for them making sure they're they're okay um, and let's see, let's see, do undergraduate international students get teaching or research assistantship opportunities while studying? Um, yes, you, in a way you can. Um, we have a lot of our international students were math tutors in the math zone, so that was one of their jobs. Um, the woman who runs the math zone is, she's just been like a mother to a lot of our international students, I know, uh, very supportive. Um, and then as far as the research goes, um, a, a number of our, um, our undergraduates, I know Aditya was one of them who was up there, well, a number of the ones that I, I put up there, they were all involved um, in research type um, activities where they were getting paid. Um, they were kind of research jobs within, uh, within their, their majors. So th those are available. Mm -hmm.
Is that it? Oh, oh there's another one. Um, we do not require freshmen to live on campus for the first year. If you do live on campus, though, you have to purchase the, the meal plan. So um, the cost that I listed up here for the housing, and, um, and we do offer summer housing as well. I just didn't include that there, but that housing cost is for our most reasonable um, on campus living option, which is in one of our older dorms, but it has like a community bathroom, which is, of course it's not co-ed or anything like that. It's just single um, gender on the floor. And then the meal plan, which is unlimited. I mean, you can go as many times a day as you want to go um, during the time that the, the, the cafeteria is open. So, um, but yeah, you, you don't have to live on campus that first year. I do encourage it because in order to, to apply for a residence hall assistant job, you do have to have lived on campus for, um, for two semesters and then you apply for it while during your second semester living there. Um, So I had a question about um, differences between public and <clears throat> private institutions when speaking about learning outcomes or professor office hours and student faculty ratio. Um, I, I mean, the biggest, I guess, difference between, like, I would focus on the size. Public institutions are generally gonna be bigger. Um, our school is kind of a medium-sized public institution, if you will, um, but you won't find too many other public institutions that are smaller than that unless it's a community college um, public institution. There are also a lot of larger private institutions, but there are some, um, you know, smaller liberal arts private institutions where, um, you know, you might just being in that smaller setting gives you more of that like honors college type feel um, opportunity, which is why like a, a lot of larger institutions will offer that honors college because it's almost like having a small liberal arts college option on your campus. Um, although you have access to a wider range of, um, <clears throat> of majors at a larger campus. So yeah, if you're at a smaller institution, the likelihood that your student faculty ratio will be smaller is, is very likely. And that may be a reason why, you know, students choose to go to a small liberal arts um, school. Um, our student faculty ratio, I think it was, I think it's 17 to one. Um, we do have, of course, like larger lecture hall style classes in any normal running year. Um, but then usually those will have like a, you know, often will have a lab component breakout where, you know, you, you have a, um, a TA that you can meet with. But in general, once you get into your, your actual major classes, then those are, you know, you're probably not gonna see more than 30 students um, in a class for those. Um, if I plan to take a gap year this coming year, what should I include in the reason for the gap year will affect my admission? Um, taking a gap year won't affect your admission, but it may affect your scholarship um, opportunities. Um, we unfortunately, in our office, we're a small office and we handle um, all of the international applications. Um, so from start to finish, um, basically I'm the point the contact point for um, undergraduate along with one other staff person. But the um, scholarship process is handled fully by the scholarship office. So um, you can, um, they do have a, a scholarship um, appeal process that opens up uh, later after the scholarship deadlines have passed and you can submit an appeal application and include those issues um, in your appeal application. I'm just not sure, you know, what the chances are that they're going to approve appeals for students um, based on, um, on COVID reasoning. Um, so that's something to, to consider there. Um, you might be better off, you know, applying and getting the scholarship and then deferring and then applying for the appeal saying, oh, I got the scholarship. I applied on time, but I had to defer because of the COVID situation. I think you might have a better chance um, 
keeping your scholarship that way. Um, okay, so as an entering class 12 student, would admissions be impacted for the 2021 year as many senior students this year are deferring their college start date to 2021? So you're, um, yeah, so we, we have students already that were admitted for 2020 and are deferring to 2021. Um, again, that's not an issue for us in terms of admission. Um, we don't have a problem deferring the admission, but um, if a student had a scholarship, they'll probably need to appeal, you know, um, send an appeal application. And then, um, you know, if students didn't apply and were admitted later, you know, you can include that in your appeal um, information for the scholarship once that appeal application is available. Mm -hmm. Students, we'll wait for a quick uh, two minutes uh, before we wrap up for the day. I'm sure Ms. Petra has to go for other engagements and meetings, so we <laughs> must respectful of our time and uh, we'll just wait for a quick one more minute it's 6 29 p.m here in india so a uh, quick one more minute uh, before we wrap up for the day and uh, we'll also have, be having a quick poll uh, so that uh, we can share that with miss uh, petra as well so kindly uh, uh, participate in that poll to all the students and i'm just going to wait for one more minute for any questions if not i'm going to launch the poll thank you petra thank you students great thank you So I'm going to wait for another quick, quick uh, 30 seconds. Petra, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to launch the poll. Okay. Uh, students, parents, please participate in this poll. Uh, really helpful for your feedback. Uh, really appreciate it. And then, of course, we will uh, wrap up for the day. It's already a time, but we'll just wait for another 15 to 30 seconds before we wrap up. So I'm going to wait for another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'm going to share the results. Uh, Petra, are you able to see it? Sometimes yes. the results don't appear on screen. Are you yeah. able to see it? I am. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> and I hope you're able to uh, see me too. Yes. Thank okay, you. great. So uh, students, parents, guidance counselors, thank you very much for joining us on the Knowledge at KPT Admissions 101 workshop series session today. We truly appreciate your kind time and support. Um, just a gentle note, this session is recorded and will be shared with all the schools, not only the ones who have participated, also in the nearby area. So please feel free to share it with all your student and parent body that you will be knowing of as it will help improve engagement and relationship building with the University of Southern Mississippi. As Ms. Petra has already shared her email address, I will be kindly waiting for the next few minutes before we log out for the day. So you may write her email address down so that you may be in touch with her for future uh, conversations. And I uh, be hoping these conversations continue well after the session is over. Having said that, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Petra for her kind time and support in joining us for the Knowledge of KPT Admissions 101 workshop series. Thank you so much, Petra. We really appreciate your kind time. And uh, we look forward to being in touch with you. And thank you to all the students and parents who joined us today. Yeah, I echo that. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and, um, and being able to, to talk to you and some, to some new students. So thank Great. you. Thank you so much, Petra. We wish you a wonderful day. Students, I'll be online for next one minute. Uh, just because I've written the email down and I will be also putting it in the chat box. 
so that it will be easier for everyone to note it out just in case if anyone has not noted it down so i'm just going to do it right now as we speak and uh, thank you once again petra for your kind time and support we truly truly appreciate it thank you okay wish you a wonderful day thank you bye 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 bye